should be the attitude on our heart, not just when we gather in church, but at all times. Because God is, we are. It was his hand that created us. Amen? Somebody give him another big old great big hand. Give him a of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask our devotion team to come on up and help lead in some devotion at this time. Hallelujah. I sing loud. I sing loud. I try to get the chance. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine.
just to say thank you, God. We just thank you for another day that we've never seen, Lord God. And you bless us to be able to wake up and 
open our eyes on today and we're able to hear the birds on this morning, Father God, and we're able to feel the rain on today, Father God, and we just thank you for the ability to feel on today, Lord God. We thank you that you counted not robbery to bless with another day to get some things in order, Father God. And as we come together on this afternoon, we come to just worship you. We come to just magnify your holy and your righteous name, Lord God, because you deserve all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor, Father God. So we come with a praise in our heart on today, Father God. We come with worship in our spirit on today, Father God. Why? Because you deserve it, Father God. Had it not been for you being on our side, Father God, where would we be? I dare not wonder where we would be if it had not been for you, Lord. So we come to say thank you on today, Father God. We come to invite the Holy Spirit to have his way on today. Do what you see fit on today. Hallelujah. We just thank you now for what you're going to do. We thank you for the word that's coming forth. We thank you that we can break communion on today, Father God, just to reverence and remember Jesus on today. We just honor you on today. We lift you up. We give you all glory. We give you all honor. And we give you all praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask Sister Brianna to come up and just welcome my visitors. Good evening, church. Good evening. Um, we here at Villa Christian Church would like to formally welcome our guest today. On today, we would ask for a guest response, giving honor to our pastor. Okay. Giving honor to our pastor, our minister Andresa, and everybody in their respective places. Let's have fun today in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 For those of you who are visitors who would like to stand and give your name, please feel free to do that at this time. I'm looking at my daughter, Erica, just smiling. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. My name is Erica Malazay's mom. So, a couple of you I met before, but pleasure to meet you all. Glad to be here, and thank you for having me. Amen. 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 Brother Mike, did you yeah. like to stand? Well, it is. Uh, Mike and Darlene, uh, Mazamara, we're from Middletown. Mm -hmm. uh, nice to be here. We got the invite by my pastor. Robin, and uh, we just uh, welcome this time. We just can't wait to see what God wants to do with us in the midst of us. Amen. Uh, he's, got, he's got a plan, and uh, we're part of it. Amen. And we just uh, welcome everything the Holy Spirit wants to do here today. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. 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 We truly thank and praise God for Brother Mike and, and his lovely wife being in the place today. As I told you all last Sunday when I was preaching, I met them some months back, and um, it was just amazing how the Lord moved through them, and then to think I was telling my sister just last week, you know, I had to call Brother Mike and his wife, and, and to go on my email and see that they had emailed me, like literally two days later, it was just like, that was God's timing, so we truly thank and praise God for connections, that God makes the connections when we truly allow him in our lives and to order our steps. Those connections are made, so we thank and praise God for that. I thank and praise God for my daughter Erica being here. I'm just so excited, and I pray that this is not your last time. So I just truly thank and praise God for that. Each and every one of you, give yourselves a hand for pressing your way on the house today. You could be somewhere else right now, but you chose to come into the house of the Lord and lift him up with me and give him glory. So we thank and praise God for that. We're going to go into the part of service where I truly enjoy, and that is what we call testimony service. Um, the Bible says that's how we overcome, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So if there's one who has a testimony on this afternoon, I would ask that you would stand now. Is there one? If you just want to tell God, thank you. If you just want to think of a wake you up on his more. If you just want to lift up a song to him, now's the time. Is there one? Is there one? Wow. God is good. <laughs> I heard that one. I heard a God is good. And all the time he is good. Is there one? Praise God. <laughs> I've been trying to let y'all get it in, but you know I can tell the goodness of the Lord at any time, any moment, any day. Why? Because he is that good. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, calm down. Okay. But see, when I think of the goodness of Jesus... And all that he has done for me, yes, my God, yes. right? I can't help but.
get excited. I can't be quiet. I ain't known to be quiet anyway. But when you start to think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done, all that he has kept you from, yeah. all he has brought yeah. you through, where he's taking you, you got to get excited about that thing. Like you might be in the middle of something and feel like, oh, I ain't got nothing to praise God for. Listen, you in it because you about to get out. So that's when you give God the praise, right? Your testimony could be, I praise him now because I'm getting out, right? Hallelujah. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. That's what they say in Jesus' name, right? So I just honor God on this afternoon. I give him all glory, all honor, and all praise. We honor Pastor on today. Honor all of you under the sound of my weak voice. I just rise and say, tell God thank you. Like, I don't need to have, like, a long list of things. My life is a testimony, so that's what it is. But I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time yes. with you all, right? Yes. I'm glad we can come together in fellowship and worship our Father, our Daddy, our Provider, yes, yes, our yes. Waymaker, our Miracle Worker. He's a miracle worker, y'all. Ask me how I know, I can tell you. But I just rise giving him honor and glory because that's what he deserves. Right? He kept us over this week. This has been a long week for me, y'all. Y'all know about my new position. This is the first week of the new position, Jesus. <laughs> we made it through by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Right? But it's not even about that. It's because I still have a sound mind on today. Right? I still have a loving heart on today. I know how to forgive on today. I can have a little bit of patience on today. And that's only because of God's grace. Right? Because he had that with me. So I just rise giving him glory for who he is. Not about what he's done and what he's given me, but because of who he is in my life today. And I honor him for that. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Nothing wrong with saying thank you. Nothing wrong with saying thank you. Is there another? Is there another? It's a quiet house today. Well, I tell you. I can make noise all by myself. <laughs> but y'all, those of you who don't be know, I can. I can have a Holy Ghost party all by myself. But I understand if you don't want to rise at this moment, no pressure. I truly would be remiss if I didn't come in my daddy's house and give honor to him. I truly thank and praise God for who he is in my life, for what he's brought me from and what he's bringing me to. I truly just thank and praise him for life, health, and strength, as the old folks say, for the activity of my limbs. Because sometimes we can take for granted. You know, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I got When I sit up on the side of the bed, I got to take a moment before I swing my legs around. I'm <laughs> taking care of people in the nursing home like that. No, I'm there. So I, 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 I don't take for granted activity of my limbs. I got a, two knees that need replacement. But God is still good. I'm still walking. I'm still able-bodied. So I truly thank and praise that we go through get those senior moments. I don't know who can identify with me out there. Those senior moments. You're talking to somebody, you're going to say something, and you just lose your thought all of a sudden. But God is good. God is gracious. He brings that thought back after a few minutes. Thank you, Jesus. So I don't take for granted the activity of my limbs, the use of my mind. I don't take that for granted. I truly thank and praise him, you know, in this house on today, and not just today, but all the time. You know, as the world grows wickeder and wickeder and darker and darker, we still can be a beacon light because we know we are connected to a source. Yeah. Ain't that good news? Yeah. You know how many people are walking around here right now, going out of their mind, going crazy, yeah. contemplating suicide because they don't understand what's happening in this dark world and they can't handle it. But when you are connected to a source, said for all he continues to do. I'm asking all of you who know a word of prayer to continue to pray for my strength as I continue to pray for yours. Amen? Amen. If there's not another, we're going to go ahead and lift up our offering at this time. See, that's what I'm talking about. Sister Alizé just jumped up. I didn't even have that. She just jumped up. <laughs> for those of you who, I know a lot of us give by Cash App and it's I messed it up last Sunday, y'all, so I don't dare say it this Sunday. It's dollar sign, G-R-8-T-E-R, -E love C-C. Amen. 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 I know the majority of us tithers, we give online, we, we give it that way. Um, those of you who, you know, like, if you don't have it, come up and tap the basket, because God is still in the blessing business. You know, y'all remember that woman in the Bible that had two mites? Mm -hmm. She gave everything she had, and it was because she was trusting God. 
So um, just come up and touch the basket. Just trust him because he truly knows all about your troubles. He knows everything you're going through, everything you're facing. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we all.
Andresa to lead us in our altar call prayer, and then after that, I'm going to give the mic to Brother Mike and his wife, um, Sister Darlene, to let the Lord use them in whatever capacity the Lord seems fit, and then after that, you'll hear the preached word of God. Amen? Amen. Can we assemble ourselves at the altar at this time? God and God alone, and it's all a part of his strategic plan. Amen. So we lift up our world, the conditions, the tragedies yes. that's yes. taking place all over the land. Ukraine, as they're going through, we're going to continue to lift them up. Those who are sick and shut in, those who are in convalescent homes, those who are incarcerated, yes. we're going to continue to lift them up. Those in orphanages, yes. we're going to continue to lift them up. Amen? Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we come together. We come together interceding on behalf of those that may not even know your name, Lord God. Yes. We come interceding for those that don't know how to call out in the midnight hour, Heavenly yes. Father. That don't know how to call out to you when all hell is breaking loose, Lord God. Yes. That they don't know how to call out on you when it seems like the world is against them, Lord God. And they're confused and they're depressed and they're doubtful, Lord. We come to intercede on their behalf on today, Lord God. And asking you to just make a way out of no way, Heavenly Father. We ask you to just meet them wherever they are, Lord God. They don't have to be in the church building on today, Father God. Meet them where they are at, Father God. If it's on the street, Father God. If it's laying on the couch, Father God. If it's in the bar, Father God. Meet them where they need you to meet them on today, Lord God. And we ask you to do something new on the inside, Father God, so they can just be restored and renewed in you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you for being a restorer of all those things that may have broke, been broken, Father God. We thank you for being the mender of our hearts on today, Father God. For with you, we can do all things. And we thank you for giving us the strength that we need when we feel like we have no strength left, Lord God. We thank you for being our comforter when we feel comfort comfortless father god we just thank you for being our friend we when we feel friendless lord god you're just always right there right on time lord and we honor you for that on today father god we honor you for continuing to be with us in this world that's ever changing lord god this world that would want us to turn our backs against you when things don't go our way father god and this world that wants us to talk about you when things don't go our way father god but we stand now in the holy boldness you have given us to say that this too shall pass father god and we will be bold soldiers on your battlefield father god hallelujah no matter what comes our way we will proclaim that we are a child of god hallelujah whether we're on the job father god whether we're in the store on the highway father god we will speak to your goodness father god because you are great and you are worthy to be praised, Lord God. We just ask you to continue to bring peace within this world, Father God. All throughout the world, Father God. We speak peace into the atmosphere, Father God. We speak understanding into the atmosphere on today, Father God. We speak forgiveness into the atmosphere on today, Father God. We speak patience, compassion, kindness 
into the atmosphere on today, Father God. Allow us to display those characteristics because we say that we're a child of God. Hallelujah. And we are charged to enlarge the kingdom, Father God. So allow us to go on the highways and the byways and to be your mouthpiece, Father God. To be the Bible that someone doesn't even own yet, Father God. Allow us to be that. Allow us to bring the scriptures alive on today, Father God. Allow our lives to be a living testament of your goodness of your grace and of your mercy, Father God. Yeah. And we honor you for that on today, Father God. We ask you to just continue to stir us up from the inside out, Father God. And let us not lean to our own understanding, Father God, but we're going to lean and we're going to depend on you, Father God. We're going to lean and depend on you when we can't even see the light. Hallelujah. We're going to lean and depend on you when our body is aching and racking with pain, Father God, because we know that you are our healer on today, Father God. We speak healing into the midst on today. Hallelujah. We speak deliverance on today, Father God. Deliverance in our mind and our hearts, Father God. Deliverance from any drugs and alcohol, Father God. We speak it into the atmosphere on today, Father God, because you are a deliverer and there is nothing that you cannot do. Hallelujah. So we thank you now for being able to walk in deliverance on today. We thank you for being able to walk in our healing on today. We thank you that we are able to walk in our freedom on today. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're our dad and you said that you will make a way. Hallelujah. And we thank you for that on today, Father God. We just ask you to be with all authorities on today. Government, local, all around the world, Father God. Be with them. Give them sound mind and thinking on today, Father God. Allow them to know what to do when it's right for others, Father God. Help them, Father God, to lean on you and ask clear direction on today, Father God. Help us, those, world, those countries in the world, Father God, just somehow cease and bring peace, Father God. Bring reconciliation. Do what you do. Do the impossible on today, Father God, because you are a man of the impossible, Lord. And we just thank you. We honor you. We ask you to keep our children on today. Keep them as they go to school, while they're out in the streets, walking to the bus stop or walking home from school, Father. Continue to keep them covered with your protection, Lord. And allow us to be the parents that can help to raise them up into your will and your way, Father God. Allow us to be that example that our children need on today. Father God, help us. Help us to show them the way and not just tell them the way, Lord God. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us to be more diligent to serve you and only you, Father God. Help us to be better servants on today, Father God. Help us to be better encouragers on today, Father God. Help us to be better mentors on today, Father God. Help us to do whatever you need us to do to draw men and women onto you, Lord God. And we just ask that you continue to help us to, to just be like my you. Be like you, Lord God. Christ-like. Help us to be Christ-like on today. The world doesn't know how it, what it is to love when someone's hurt you, Lord God. But let us show the world how to love despite of being hurt, despite of being talked about, despite of being let down. Let us show the world how to love unconditionally because you love us unconditionally, Father. And we thank you for it on today. We render all our cares and our concerns at the altar right now, Lord. We're going to surrender them right now, Lord. And we dare not pick them back up and take them back because we are free. And we are free indeed. We are delivered. We are delivered indeed. We are healed. We are healed indeed. And we thank you for it now. As we give you all glory, we give you all honor, and we give you all praise. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn the mic over to Brother Mike and his beautiful wife. She has such a sweet spirit, y'all. Just a sweet, sweet spirit. Which when they were ministering to me on Main Street, she, I had my, you know, my head bowed and I was listening to what the Lord was saying. I remember her laughing in my ear saying, if you could just see what God is showing me. It, it was just so sweet and angelic. It was beautiful. And I wanted to be able to see what she was seeing, but I couldn't. But she just kept saying, if you could just see what God is showing me. So God is just so good. He's so worthy of all the praise. And I truly thank God for the connection. I hope this won't be your last time coming to see us. Um, we truly already love you. I have told my family about you already. And so they already love you too. So I'm going to turn the mic over to you too.
see what the Lord is doing just in the midst of this little group here. Uh, we can join people together from different neighborhoods, different communities, different backgrounds. And it's all about the love of Jesus. It'll flow from our hearts to one another. Yes, the yes, lives yes. of each, in each, and every, each and every one. Yes, you know, sometimes when we get into a place where we don't know what's next, you know, but we trust the Lord because he's moving. He is moving in the earth today like Hello. never before. Hello, There's Lord. darkness filling the earth, but the presence of God and the power of God is making inroads in places that we don't even know. You haven't heard about but God gives us a little glimpse and a picture of what he's doing in the earth today. And it's marvelous because he's bringing us, he's ushering people into the kingdom of God. They're being set free from all of their bondages and their effects of, their, of the world on their life. How the enemy has captured their lives and just devastated them. But one minute in the presence of God, one moment in the presence of the king makes all the difference in the world. Yes. We are changed forever. You know, we're singing songs today that are glorious. But I'll tell you what, those songs are going to have greater meaning because those words are going to become a living reality within your lives. Those words are becoming life to you, life-changing words. We're, you know, we wait on the Lord. We look to wait on the Lord. Something about waiting on the Lord, I'll tell you, is life-changing. You know, it's in the scriptures. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yeah. They shall mount up with the wings as eagles. And, you know, they shall run and not be weary. Yeah, I'm about to tell you. You know, not only do we wait upon the Lord, there's a great scripture that says, God, let me read this to you just for a second. Do you mind if we do this? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's... Um, Got a word, bring a word. We can sing this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my, 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 my. my Bible says in uh, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are they that wait for him. Amen. Two parts there. God's waiting for us. The Lord waits for us to wait for him. We often, we often hear that God's waiting for us. You know, we wait We wait on the Lord. You know, God's given us that direction. He says, listen, they that wait upon the Lord shall be the worst. We need to wait on God. We need to spend quiet time in the presence of the King of Kings. There isn't any, there's nothing, there's nothing greater than that, than to be sitting in your chair, in your quiet place, in your secret place, because every one of us should have one of those places that's set apart just for the purposes of God. Yes. That he calls us away. He says, come away with me, my beloved. Come away with me. You know, he's not telling us to go someplace. He's telling us to come. The call of the Lord is to come first. So we're going to come and wait upon the Lord and watch what he does. When we wait on the Lord, we're waiting in expectation. Amen. Nobody else is in the room with you. You're there with the Lord. You're sitting in your chair. And you're waiting in expectation. And God is going to enter the room and meet you there. Jesus. You are going to have a meeting time with the Lord Jesus Christ. As he comes to visit you. This is a day of visitation. Amen. God is visiting his church. God is visiting his bride. God is hungry for his people. He's desirous of us. The scriptures keep pointing it out. It's God calling us. Deep calls unto deep. The deep of God calls into the deep of us. There's a deep call unto deep. The heart of the father is calling into the heart of his children. Come away. Meet with me and I will change your life. Your lives will be changed in a moment of time. It may take a process. We've all been in the process. We've all been in a, a time where God is you know, preparing us, preparing us, preparing us. But it has a purpose. Mm -hmm. It has a distinct reason for what he's doing. And it's meant for our good, but it's for an eternal reward. It's for an eternal place that God wants to bring us into. <coughs> you know, uh, I'm going to leave my wife with, with a moment because 
I know she has something burning in her heart as well. <laughs> um, coming into that place of waiting upon him, he calls you his bride. Right? You are his bride. Mm -hmm. And in Song of Solomon, she finds the lover of her soul. Mm -hmm. And she says, I have found him mm -hmm. in my soul. I held him and I'll never let him go. Mm -hmm. That's his relationship with you. And when that becomes reality, you want more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's in Song of Songs, uh, yeah. chapter 3, verse 4. Yeah. I have found the one whom my soul loves. We can spend a, a half a day here just talking about that one scripture. Oh. We can talk about that one scripture, how, how God brought that alive. He brought that alive to her. You know, we're actually going to be married this month. Of 57 years. Uh, we have, we have uh, uh, three children, and they're not even children. They're all grown adults. They're all in their 50s, believe it or not. Time has just moved right by us. You know, we have uh, four, no, five grandchildren and four great grandchildren. Wow. So the Lord has been moving in our lives over the years, and you know, we've been in different places. The Lord does have us traveling to. Uh, fellowship down in Long Island, Connecticut, in Long Island, New York, where we go there probably uh, once every five or six weeks. We tend to minister down there with the folks down there. The great, great, great connection. It actually reminds me of this place because it's uh, it's a basement ministry. You know what the Lord has called that place? He's called it the basement cathedral. He has labeled it a cathedral. Because it's rich with the presence of God. Jesus, Jesus. As soon as you walk in the door, you feel the presence of God. Jesus. God is the tangible. I'm talking about the manifest, tangible presence of God is in the house. Mm -hmm. This house is going to carry the same anointing. It's going to carry it. It's going to get increased. There's going to be an increased presence of God to flow into this house. Because you are God's children. He's going to manifest himself in ways that... He so desires. He's pushing back everything else. And he's making room to come in. Yes. To meet with you and you with him in a, in a profound new way. Yes. In ways that you have not even known the goodness of God in the land of the living. God is so on the move today. Doors are being pushed open. Kicked open. And God is coming in to show himself strong on your behalf. He is coming to show himself he is desirous of doing this. The enemy has had a foothold too long. It's God's time to show himself who he is in the earth today. It's God's time. The enemy has had a foothold for too long. It's time that God shows up and shows himself strong like never before. We are believing the earth is the Lord's and the fullness they are this, this world, he's a thief. He's taken parts of this, this globe. You know, and it's, it doesn't belong to him. It right. belongs to the Lord. Right. And God's people are rising up to their full inheritance, to the full understanding of who they are in Christ, and they are going to manifest God in the earth. We are, gonna, we are carriers. We're born to be carriers of the presence of God. There's a, there isn't a greater calling. What a high calling we are. This, we're, just, we're just not just sojourning and just going through the motions, just getting by to get by to do whatever. No, God's got a greater purpose for our lives. We are ambassadors and carriers of the presence of God. A, a tremendous gift that God's placed in our midst. Not only that, but we carry him. We carry the Son of God. We have the great blessing about it all is we have the, the, the Godhead, the triune God, mm -hmm. the Father, the Son, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwelling in us, and all three of them are one. And they've come to dwell in us. So if God is in us, who can be against us? Right. Who can defeat us? When we have the triune God residing in our spirit, in our hearts, in our lives, nothing can defeat us. Nothing can come against us. Greater is he that is in us. Amen? Yes. He is in the world. Amen. No, 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 no. I like having her by my side. You know, after all this time. I'm going to read this one scripture here. Um, yeah. Praise God. 
Thank you. Yeah, bless God. Yeah, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. He's talking about that. This isn't the Song of Songs, Song of Solomon. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing of the birds has come, and the voice of the turtle is heard in the earth. It says, for lo, the winter is past, and the rain is over and gone. This is the new day we're talking about. The winter season is over. You know, the barren time. The time where that winter season is meant to do something in our lives. Even though as hard and difficult as it is, and cold and you know, frigid, and we don't like that cold stuff. But in the midst of all that, God's doing something in our lives to break off all of the old things that have hindered us, come against us, troubled us, afflicted us, captured our lives. That winter season is coming to an end. God wants us to be free, free, free. The only way that we can serve God is when a, only a free man can set another man free. When we are free, only Jesus can set us free. Only he can set us free. When the, when the Spirit of the Lord comes to set us free, we are free indeed. Yes. Yeah, God wants to set us free from all of the captivities, all of the mindsets, all the things that have plagued us, all of the hurts and the pains of the past. God is about to reconcile us, to heal us, and to deliver us back to where we need to be. God is after that. The winter season is coming to an end. It's over and gone. This Bible, my Bible says the winter is, is, is past. The rain is over and gone. It's the spring season. We're in the spring season of God now. This is a new time, a new day. God is moving in the earth. There is, he was talking about the birds are singing. You like to hear the birds sing. Well, we got some birds around our backyard too. We got some doves that like to land, landed on our tree. But in the past, we had a tree in the back that was a bird tree, wasn't it? Yeah, all yeah. filled with doves. All filled with doves. Wow. Yeah, wow. it was just filled with doves. And, you know, the Lord was speaking to us because our favorite book is, is the Song of Songs. And behold, you have dove's eyes, my love. You know, something about a dove's eyes. You know, a dove has two eyes, but it only sees singly. It only has vision for its mate. So even though it has two eyes, it's only got eyes for one. I, in that song, I only have eyes for you. Amen. Well, I'll tell you. I think they came out of the Bible, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because that is about the dove. It has a single eye for her mate. He has a single eye for her. She has a single eye for him. Amen. There is nothing better than that. Amen. The relationship was so united together, so knit together. You know, the song, the flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing of birds has come and the voice of the turtle. You know, that singing of the birds that has come, that, I believe, God wants to do something. He's doing that around the, in the church today. He's going to do it in this church too. He's going to do it in all of his churches. The singing of the birds has come. The time of the singing of the birds has come. The singing of prophetic worship has come to the church. The time of the singing of the birds, of the prophetic song of the Lord, is going to be released in the churches. We're going to hear the song of melody and harmony that's flowing from the throne of God into the earth. And we are going to be singing songs that are so worshipful and so pleasant and pleasing to the ears of the Lord because it's coming from our spirit. When our song begins to usher up to the Lord, the song of the, uh, of the birds, the song of the doves, the ones who have a single eye for the Lord, that single eye and that song is going to flow from us upward into the throne of grace, into the throne of his presence. And that's going to be pleasing to the sound and the ears of God. God has already done that. We've heard the song of the Lord. We've heard the prophetic song being sung in the congregation. Not only is it a song sung by the people, but God was so pleased with it. You know what he did? He accompanied that song with some angels. The sound of angels begin to accompany into the room where the, where the musicians and the singers were singing. It wasn't just their voices anymore. It was an angelic host accompanying the worshipers in the congregation. And it was a sound that was so heavenly. It was just resonating back to God. God had a, 
he opened up a window mm. and he released the angels to sing with the congregation. And that was a beautiful moment in time. Mm. But he's not done with that. Amen. We're coming back to that. We're going we're gonna to dig up some of the old things that God was doing back in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. God is going to do that again. We're going to catch the wave of the Spirit as he moves in and amongst us. He wants us very sensitive. You know, the Holy Spirit is very sensitive, and so is the dove. The dove is very sensitive. It'll, it'll fly in a second if it gets distracted or if it gets frightened. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's a very calm and a very peaceful bird. But it's a sensitive bird as well. But it also is very sensitive to the presence of God. And that's what he's making us. He's, he's doing something to our sensitivity, our ear to hear. This all flows back to us waiting upon the Lord. Amen. Here we go. We're waiting upon the Lord in our quiet place, in our secret place. I'm going to do a little thing here for you. If this was your chair in your little sitting room where you're waiting on the Lord, and you're waiting on the Lord, and your hands are out, just like a, two, like a battery. You don't have a battery. It has two charges on it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, our battery gets weak and it kind of drains out. We need to come daily into the presence of the Lord Amen. and put our hands out. And he's going to put his hands and his hands are going to touch our hands. And we're going to get recharged. Amen. We're going to get refreshed. We're going to get strengthened in the presence yeah. of the Lord. Amen. God wants to do that for all of us. Amen. None of us is more special than others. You know, God wants to do that for us. Amen. He wants to meet with us. He wants to impart to us. You know, you're going to receive something of such value and such a treasure that he wants to deposit into your lives. He's going to put another piece of himself into you when you're waiting on the Lord. He's going to impart something to us. You know what it's called? It's called the substance of God. They that love me, I love those that love me. It's a reciprocal love. You know, God loves everybody. But he has a special favor for his own children. He's got a special favor he, he, chose, he chooses to give to those special ones who, that love him. Mm -hmm. I love those that love me. And those that love me, those that seek me early, will find me. And he says, I'll give you substance. So the, another version of the scripture says, I'll give you wealth. You know, but that's not, that's not the, the correct translation. It really means he's going to give us substance for us waiting upon him. He's going to deposit some of himself within us. We're going to have a greater measure of the presence of God in us. We're going to be carrying something of such weight and value in a treasure. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, but it's real. It's a real treasure. It's not something we just read about, we've heard about for years. The word is becoming alive to us today. It's becoming more alive than ever before. Because we're going to become the living epistles of Christ Jesus in the earth. We are called to be carriers of the presence of God. Wherever we go, people will, will take notice. Or they may not. You may have a word for somebody when you meet somebody on the street or in the store or wherever you might be. It's going to be, it's going to be life changing. We were in a meeting, we were at a meeting and a, and a, a pastor said, I guess. After the meeting, I went, to the, I went to the grocery store to pick up a few items. And he says, I was in the store, waiting in line, my items running to register, and there's a woman in back of me. And he turned around and he heard some sound behind her, and he heard some weeping. And he turned around and said, what's the matter? And she looked at him and he says, she was weeping because the presence of God on him was so strong. Jesus. Come on. The presence of God on him was so strong. Jesus. She says, could you tell me about Jesus? Mm. Come on. Mm -mm -mm. He says, can you? She, she was weeping because the presence of God was coming off of him, mm. affecting her that she wanted, wow. she couldn't stand herself or her life. She wanted to know about Jesus. Mm. I believe he led her to the Lord. He, he began to speak to her about Jesus Christ, the forgiveness and the, and the greatness of who, who, can she, who she can be in Christ. It was a moment in time. You know, that's not the only time. There's, there's moments. We're all going to have those encounters. God's going to make. He's going to make things. He's going to make things happen in your life. You know, when we say yes to Jesus, we say, "Lord, I'm giving you everything. I'm not holding back anything. 
He, he wants our all. He doesn't want part of us. He wants every part. He wants every part of this vessel that we are. <laughs> Thanks. <Mr. laughs> Sometimes I don't. You know, I never use this thing. You know, but that's okay. You know, he wants every part of us. You know, he doesn't want any part of this. Well, he wants all of us. You know? When we surrender and give him everything, he takes us up on that. You know, and he'll move in in a, in a greater way. He'll fill this house with the light of his glory, the light of his presence. You know, we will not only will we be changed, but we'll be able to bring something into the lives of other people. Yes. You know? So when you're sitting on your chair and you're waiting you know, upon the Lord just quietly and uh, waiting for him to come, you may, uh, you, you may get, uh, maybe, not, maybe nothing may happen for, for time. But you be consistent, be persistent in doing that. Take the time to spend some time with the Lord. There was a dear uh, pastor friend. He was a he was a teacher of the Bible College up upstate New York, and he went through a very difficult time in the ministry because, believe it or not, there was ministerial jealousy going on. Oh yeah. <laughs> ministerial jealousy was flying <laughs> flying around the house, around the building, and uh, he says, "I need to withdraw from all of this. I need to get quiet and be in the presence of the Lord." So he went to this little cottage of his. He had this little cottage on the lake. Remember, Mr. Butte? Yeah. So he, he tucked away, and he went to this little cottage, and he just went upstairs and sat in that little chair of his. He said, Lord, I'm not going to be here. For, I'm not going to ask you for anything. This is another thing about when you're waiting on the Lord. It's not about praying, and it's not about reading. It's just about waiting. This is different. We can, we can pray, and that's it. There's a time for that. There's a time for his study. That's good. Sometimes God just wants your company. He just wants your company. He just wants you to spend some time with Him. He enjoys your company. He loves being with you. He's got your He's got your name written all over His mm. all over His life. Mm. He's got your name written all Jesus, over Him. Jesus, Jesus. He has got your name written all over Him. He's, he's He's madly in love with you. Madly in love with you. Jesus. There isn't no one who's going to love you more mm. than the Son of God. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He has captured her heart. Thank he captured the bride's heart. You have captured my heart. You have ravished my heart, my sister, my bride, He calls her. You have ravished it. You have done something to my heart. He said, with one look of your eye. You know what He did? He looked in her eye. And he said, with one eye, you have ravished my heart. Mm -hmm. With one glance of your eye, Jesus. you have ravished the heart of the Father. Mm. Ravage the heart of the sun. You know what? What would it be like if both your eyes penetrated the eyes of Christ? Mm -hmm. When one has ravaged his heart, come on. You know how much he loves us? You know how much he wants to spend time with us? There's nothing like him. Yes. Yeah. So this brother is waiting upon the Lord. So Lord, I'm just I'm just here. Just to be with you. I'm not going to ask you for anything. I'm not going to ask you for a thing. I just want to spend some time with you, Lord. Because he was trying to get rid of all the thoughts and stuff that was going on. He said, I just need to get quiet with the Lord. You know what happened? He heard the door handle downstairs in his little cottage. He heard the door open. And he heard some steps. Somebody going up the steps. Then he heard the door close. He was upstairs. Then he heard some more footsteps going up the stairs. And he knew. He says, I'm just sitting here. And he felt something. He felt he knew someone was standing behind him at this time. And all he felt as he sat there, and he heard this voice. He says, I, he said, Lord, I'm just here to love you. And he heard the voice in the back of him say, I just come to tell you that I love you. And when he heard those words, he felt drops of water falling on his head. It was the tears of the Lord with such pleasure and delight that he had one who could sit here and wait on the Lord and just bless his name. And God came to visit him. Drops of water fell on his head. You know, he knew it was the tears of joy that God was delighted with his servant. He heard the steps go down the stairs. He heard the door handle open and the door close. And he knew he had a visit from the Lord. 
This is the God that we serve. This is the God that we serve. This is the God that we serve. If he can do it for one, he can do it for all. He's not a, he's not a distinguished person. Yeah. He will do it for all of us. If we just give him give him the time, give him the space, make the opportunity available, there's no telling what God can do with us. So, sing your song to the Lord. Let it become a prophetic song. I hope you're all speaking in tongues or singing in the spirit because that's that's a gift that God wants us to, to flow with, you know, our, our praise and worship to God. It could be in our regular language. It could be in our spiritual language. But usher a song up to the Lord because there's a prophetic song that's coming into the earth. We're in the spring season of this time. God is moving in the earth. We're going to be a part of what he's doing. We're not, you know, we're not going to be bystanders. God's planning on doing something in, in the earth today. And he wants us to be a part of that. He wants us to accompany him in all that he's doing. Amen? Amen. 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 Yeah. This is a way that we come and we minister to the Lord. Amen. And that is his desire for us. Amen. The most important thing is just telling him how much you love him. Amen. 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 He makes, it, he makes it very simple for us. Let's tell him how much we love him, how much we care for him. You know, and it's you know sometimes it's just our words, but it's coming deeper. You know, he wants it to come deep from within us. You know, you know, when we you know he reaches into that place, he'll meet with us. You know, I'll tell you, you know, it's a transforming time, transforming moments with the with the King of Kings and the Lord of Glory. Amen. Uh, O oh, my dove, thou art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs. Let me see your countenance. Let me hear your voice. Those are, I'll, I'll leave those with those those two last words. I got a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, I'm gonna leave you with those things. He said, I want to hear your voice, and I want to see your face. He says, your face is lovely, and your voice is sweet. Don't think that it's not. We we have different pictures of ourselves of what we think we look like. But in the eyes of Jesus Christ, your face is lovely and your voice is sweet to him. And he wants to hear that. He wants to hear that. And you can talk to him in secret, talk to him in private, tell him how much you love him. He will begin to set you free and because he wants us to set he wants us free. He wants us free from everything, you know. Everything but himself. <laughs> he wants to occupy everything in our lives. He wants to be the sole source of all of us. God bless you. Thank you for listening to me uh, and us. I know there's more that God wants to do, and I just pray that there be a full release of the presence of God in this house, that healing would come, healing would come to your lives in your spirit, soul, and body. God would set you free from all of the entanglements of the past. Lord, as he would, you'd be, pull, you'd be placed on a higher plane of revelation and understanding of God. I pray that uh, the fresh revelation of the Son of God would be eminent, be so strong in your lives that nothing else would matter to you. You know, nothing else would, be, would take first priority. You're his first priority. His eye is upon you. It is never off of you. His guy is on you. He's, he's, he's always looking after you. We saw a picture today of a, of a ring of fire. You know, it was in, in a field. There's a ring of fire. And there's a person that was standing in the middle of the fire. In this ring of fire. And that's that's a picture of the Lord encircling, encompassing us. There is nothing that's going to touch us. This flame of fire, this wall of fire is around us. You know, and it tells us that he sees us. He sees everything we do. He hears every word we speak. He knows the intentions of our heart. That's probably the deepest thing. Because he's going a little bit deeper. You know, these things up here in our mind. But he, 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 he probes the intents of our heart. He goes a little bit deeper and deeper, you know, because he's forming something. He's fashioning them. You know, we're to be formed into the image of the Son of God. Yeah. We're to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. When that transformation takes place, we give him a full rights to do that. That's going to carry on into the eternal realms of God. 
and what we become here in the image of Jesus Christ is what we're taking into eternity. We're taking something with us and it better be the image of Jesus. Yeah, He's after it. He, he wants to reproduce himself in us. We're to be conformed to the image of the Son of God and enjoy his company all the days of our life. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Thank you. We truly thank God for that prophetic word on this afternoon. Hallelujah. I tell you, God is in the earth. And He's looking to spend time with each and every one of us. What a comforting word. Yeah. Something about going into the presence of God, you know, um, I find for myself, I don't have to have any pretense. There, 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 just, there, there doesn't have to be anything fake or phony about when you go into the presence of God. Yeah. It's just you and God. Yeah. Nobody else is in the room. And God already knows anyways. So you don't have to pretend. He knows all about you. And he still loves you. Amen. He loves you. Think about this. He loves you, yet he knows you. Think about it. When I think about me, and I think about the wretched man that I am, he loves me. He knows me. He knows exactly who I am. You know those, those unholy thoughts that try to creep in? He knows. Yeah. But guess what? He still loves me. Yeah, you, you know those unholy words that try to escape our mouth? He knows. But he still loves you. Those, those unholy deeds we call, find ourselves doing, compromising at times, he doesn't stop loving you. It's something about being in the presence of God. He knows. And he still loves you. He loves you. And he still knows you. What a God we serve. Yes, yes, yes. Think about the implications of man's love. There's always a condition. I can love you until you dot, dot, dot. I love you until I find out this about you and then my love changes. I love you until you don't fit the description of who I think you should be and what I think you should be doing. God is not like that. God said, I know you. <laughs> I know your thoughts before you even think them. I know the desires in your heart and in your mind. He said, I know the very amount of hair that's on your head. Yet, I still love you. What a mighty and a good God we serve. We thank Brother Mike and Sister Darwin for that word. And I just don't believe that the Lord was finished. And I believe, I'm praying that they will come back. Um, and we are going to give them full reign um, of the pulpit the next time they come back. And I won't have to get up and preach. I could just sit down and listen. <laughs> But I'm just going to go into the word just a little bit. I believe we, we got some, some meat on this afternoon. And um, I truly am a believer of spending the presence, spending time in the presence of God. Um, it truly makes a difference in my life. When I, when I am dealing with everyday life situations and, you know, out on my job or, you know, even in the grocery store, the enemy is always trying to challenge you. Mm -hmm. I heard a preacher say one time, the enemy wakes somebody up every single day to get on your nerve. <laughs> <laughs> and when you think about it, but when you spend that time with Jesus, you don't let those little things bother you. Right. You know, you, you can overlook those things because you realize, I think I heard somebody pray it earlier, you realize that when this sometimes you, you might get on God's nerves, but he overlooks those things. Because of who he is, because of his character, because of the love he has for us, the grace, the mercy yes, yes. that woke us up this morning. 
Thank you, Jesus. It wasn't from last week. And he said, you're running out, Sister Dawn. You, you got a few days left. But that grace and mercy met us this morning when we woke up. Yes. And when we take on the attributes, I heard Brother Mike say, when we become his ambassadors. We become carriers of who Jesus Christ is. His character. His word. His actions. His reactions. We become Christ-like. And when I can go out into the world and give that off to somebody, I don't have to think about it when I'm in Christ. I don't have to think about whether you cuss me out if I'm going to cuss you back when I'm in Christ. Not when I'm truly in Christ. I don't have to think about it. Automatically, I'm praying for you. Because I feel like she may just not know the things I know. I don't have to hate you, put you down, talk about you. Not when I'm in Christ. Not when I really know him. Not when I really spend time with him. I say it all the time. To be in the presence of God. You can't tell me that you've been in his presence and you remain the same. He's too holy. He's too holy. Somebody ought to catch that one. So when you're in the presence of God... And those situations come at you. Guess what? You still display the characteristics of God. Because you've been spending time with him. And I love what you said. Just go and sit in a chair and just open up your arms. Say, God, I'm not here for no other reason just to tell you that I love you. Boy, I, I just felt that thing burning on the inside. Just to tell you I love you. So many times we get in the habit of going to God, we think he's some sort of genie in the box. Pop him out and God, I need this, I need that, I need this. Can you do this, that, and the other? I can imagine. I, I can just see him sitting there now smiling. Sister Dawn, you just say, God, I, I just want to be here because I love you. I didn't come to ask you for anything. I just want to tell you I love you. And I think that's so important, so detrimental in our relationship with God. It's when, when we truly fall in love with Jesus. I can tell you, there was a time when I loved Jesus. And there was a time when I fell in love with Jesus. And when I fell in love with Jesus, it made a huge difference in who I was and who I started becoming. It's a huge. Y'all ever know when you fall in love with Boo? You, you, you know when you fall in love with Boo. And, and, and Boo say, Girl, I love the way you fry that chicken. Guess what? Every week we fry that chicken for Boo. Girl, he loves the way we fry. And, and, and then he said, but You know, I, I don't just don't like it when you, when you wear your hair like that. I like it the other way. Guess what we do? We change up the hairstyle to the one he likes. <laughs> Whatever Boo say, we go by whatever Boo say. Because we want to please Boo. Huh? Y'all know who Boo is. That special someone over there. Him, her. It's got to be the same way when it comes to Jesus. This can't be a talk thing. It's got to be a walk thing. Which leads me to my scripture. And like I said, I'm not going to be before you long because I do believe uh, God used Brother Mike in a mighty way. Yes. And I truly believe that he's not finished. I believe there's more to that word. And I, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. I just believe uh, we, we're going to give him time to release what God has placed on, on the inside of him. I'm going to attempt to sing a little bit of this song before I go into the word. And, and I felt like when Brother Mike and Sister Darlene were up here, I felt like, did they see a little bit of what the Lord gave me for today? <laughs> God truly, he, he just orchestrated. Even when Mr. And Jason was praying, I said, well, did he show her? <laughs> what, what, what is going on here? But I just love when he aligns himself yes, up. Yes, yes, yes. And so I'm going to attempt to sing a little bit of this song. And I, I heard <laughs> Sister Darlene say, just require more of him. And I said, God, she all in my song. <laughs> but the song simply says, 
more of you. I want more, 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 more of you. More than anything in this life. All I want is more of you. This world can have riches. This world can have silver, silver and gold. More than anything, anything, anything in this life. All I want is more of you. Yes, 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 yes. More of you. I want more, 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 more of you. More. verses 14 through 22. For those of you who are physically able, if you will rest upon your feet in reverence to God's holy word. Revelation. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ to John the Revelator as he was exiled to the Isle of Patmos. So this is the book of Revelation. The third chapter, if you have it, say amen. amen. If you need a minute, say I need a minute. And then the word of the Lord says, Write to the angel of the church in Laodicea. Thus says the amen, the faithful and true witness, the originator of God's creation. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. For you say I'm rich, I have become wealthy and need nothing. And you don't realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you may be rich. White clothes so that you may be dressed and your shameful nakedness not be exposed. And ointment to spread on your eyes so that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be zealous and repent. See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door the conversation with Jesus, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. To the one who conquers, I will give the right hand to sit with me on my throne, just as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. Let anyone who has ears to hear, listen to what the spirit 
says to the church, let us pray. Most gracious and everlasting Father, it is because of you that we gather in this place on this afternoon. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would crucify and kill all of my flesh, oh God. Let them not see me, but let them only hear you. For all that I have, everything that I am, any wisdom that I speak comes directly from you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I sang that song, More of You, because what Jesus, what, 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 what was being said to the church at Laodicea is they have relaxed their standards. They began to believe in themselves. They thought it was, it was themselves that they, they were the ones that were creating their own blessings because they were wealthy, they had riches, they had material things. And so they, they fell a little bit off because instead of recognizing and realizing that blessings only come from God, and, and, and they were based on material things, not, not true and rich blessings, but they were, back, you know you know how we do, we, we get that new house and we get that car and we, we, we get that promotion and we get this and we, we all of a sudden, we up here and we think that we done did it all and, and it's all because of me and then we can carry that attitude into the church house. You know, and begin to rely on self instead of God because we there's a point where we, we can be so well connected to people and have so many degrees and education and all these worldly bridges that we begin to think that we are self-sufficient. And we begin to rely on self. And we carry the attitude in the church and we're snooty and we sit there and I'm not worshiping God and I'm not going to praise God. I don't need it. It's, I did this. And it becomes all about the person. But the song says, God, I want more of you. Because in order for us to be seated in the heavenly places, there comes a point in time in your relationship with God where you have to realize it's not about me, but it's all about Jesus. So if I had to title this message, I would simply title it for God, for self. That's the question we can all ask ourselves. Why am I doing this? Why am I here? Am I here for God? Am I here for self? I'm glad that God used Brother Mike to come before me and to minister in the way that he ministered. Because it just made this that much easier to go into. Oftentimes, we don't want to hear words of correction or rebuke or reproof. We, we, we want to hear those things that tickle our fancy. You know, you know, the Lord is blessing you right now. And God said you're going to have a house in five years. And you're going to have a Cadillac in seven years. And, oh, God said he's going to build your bank account. You ain't going to never need to buy another dime again. We want to be preached happy. But the thing I liked about the prophets of old, prophets came to warn you about something. When God wasn't pleased, he would send a prophet. Y'all remember when, when David messed up? And he took Bathsheba. He took another man's wife. Now this was, David was one brother Mike. They said, God said, was a man after my own heart. Yeah. Well, let me tell you what this man after God's own heart did, right? He went about his roof when he should have been out with his men in the field, first of all. Okay. He decided he wanted to stay home, you know, relax, do something every last time. You know how y'all brothers do sometimes. Y'all just want to chill at home, you don't want to work for the day. <laughs> he decided he wants to stay home, and he goes up on his roof, he sees this beautiful woman bathing. He inquires of the woman, finds out who the woman is. Was told that that's such and such daughter and Uriah's wife. And you know what he did, Mike? He sent for her anyway. And you know what he did after he sent for her? He laid with her, he played with her, and he got her pregnant. A man after God's own heart. And he, some time went by, he just went on by his life like it was not, no, 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 let me back that story up. That ain't what happened. And then he sent for Uriah, because he wanted to, to make it fit, make, make Uriah think that that was his job. But it didn't work. See, because Uriah would have a little bit more honor about him. He said, I, going and laying with my wife and my men are out here up under the stars. I'm going to lay right here with them. So that plan didn't work. 
And then he took Uriah himself. You know, sometimes the enemy will use you to take. And, 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 and y'all know I'm used to walking. I ain't, I ain't used to this thing right here. And, and, and he, will, he will take and put a death sentence in your hand that's for you. And then execute the plan. So what he did was. He, 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 he had a note written. For Uriah to be put. In the hottest battle. On the front line. So Uriah. Would die. Man after God's own heart. King David. Took another man's wife. He knew she was somebody's wife. Try to lie and say, try to cover up. What, what y'all call them cover up things they do these days? And they, when they cover something up and try to make it seem like it wasn't them, wasn't me. Y'all remember that? Wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> and then had the husband killed. And then he had to like nothing happened. Well. Ain't that so like us? You ever do something in see where you think ain't nobody see, nobody heard, don't nobody know what's going on, and you you just kept on going like it was all right? Well, that's what David did. But then God sent the prophet Nathan to tell him a parable. And when he told him that parable about a man having much and a man having one sheep, and the man who had much took the one sheep to give it to a guest, David was furious. He was so mad, he said, that man should die. Yeah. <laughs> Not knowing God was talking about him. <laughs> and Nathan said, that man is you. Oh, Jesus. But the thing about God's grace and, and, and David, God had loved David so much and he knew that David loved him so much. And, and that's the thing about God. He knows how much we love him, even when we make mistakes, bad mistakes. He knows your heart. So he was able to forgive David. The, David paid a consequence. So don't think that sin is without consequence because you have consequences. I'm sure I, I've been there. I've committed sin in the church. And I had consequences. But I thank God that he never took his hand off me. But I set out this, that to say that prophets were usually sent to warn of something. When God wasn't pleased or when something was going to happen or when God wanted to do something. So that's why the prophets came. Because they wanted to warn of something. But these people... And Laodicea somehow really began to think that it was their riches and, and their knowledge and the, their material things and everything they acquired. They completely began to leave God out of the equation. But God told them, he said, you, you either need to pick a side. You, you need to decide whether you want to be cold or hot. You, you ever think about something that's lukewarm? Ah, so disgusting. You, you know, and, and, and the reason why I believe God chose the, the terminology lukewarm to the lay of the sea is, is because they would receive their water from an aqueduct, which is just a source that carries water to another place. But when they would get the water, it would be lukewarm. So if they tried to drink it, it would be disgusting and begin to be bitter on their stomach to the point where they would want to spit it out. So God took what they already knew and used it as an example said, you ain't to pick a side. You need to be hot, which is, you know how it is to have a nice hot cup of tea. Boy, that thing can be so soothing sometimes. He said, or you need to be cold. See, I can deal with you when you hot or when you cold. And that, when you, you ever have a cold drink that's nice and refreshing? Boy, that thing's so good when you're thirsty on a hot summer day. God said, I desire that you pick one side. But when you're somewhere in the middle and you iffy and you wishy-washy, you finicky, I will vomit you out of my mouth. And so the lay of the scenes have become lukewarm. Because they, they stopped relying on Jesus and they started relying on themselves. But God said, you need to pick a side. You need you either need to be hot or cold. I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich. Again, they were relying on what they knew. I bet they was relying on the promotions that they jobs on when they got promoted. And they was relying on the fact that they had that, that uh, what do you call it, 2000 and what year we in, 22 Cadillac. And, and they had that mansion on the hill, Erica. I can just imagine they was just relying. But God said, you think you're rich. You think you're rich. But see, I don't define rich that way. You understand what I'm saying? God said, desire my gold. You, 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 know, you know that blood that went down. On a Friday, you, you, we about to celebrate Good Friday soon. That blood that went down on a Friday, yeah. that that blood that is efficacious to this day, still effective. Yeah. That blood that, that that does not lose its power, brother Earn. Yeah. You you know what I'm talking about? He said, "Desire my gold." Mm. You can't take the gold of this world with you.
you when you leave. He said, when you desire my gold, desire that blood. The one that I died, I died, I went down to the pit of hell, I got the keys of life. And I rose. He, he didn't stay there, LSA. He got up on the third night, he rose. He said, desire. You think you're rich, but true riches is found in me. We run around here, we want to be like the Joneses. We want to acquire everything everybody else got. You got a house, I'm going to get a bigger house. You got a car, I'm going to get a better car. You got a nice wardrobe, I'm going to dress nicer. Because we think that's just the way of the world. But don't you know God said to be in the world but not of the world? Come on, come on, come on. Why are we so busy trying to act like the world? He said, desire my riches. You want to be rich? Desire my riches. And then he goes on to tell him, he says, you say I'm rich, I have become wealthy and need nothing, and you don't even realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. When it's all said and done, all that earthly stuff that you think you acquired, that you think made you so important, that you think made you so grandiose, when you die, it ain't going with you. And your soul still has to go on. Your soul still has to give an account. You still have to stand before a holy God. And give an account for every idle word and thought. My Lord. You think you're rich. Yeah. You got a hundred dollars in the bank. Some of you got millions. The Bible says it's easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye. Y'all know what a needle look like, honey, y'all so. Or half so. He said it's easy for a camel. You, you know what a camel look like. And humps and lumps and bumps. They stand about this tall. He said it's easier for them to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God. But yet we get caught up in this world. We get caught up in things that are going on around us. We start wanting to be like Susie and Lisa and Mike and Joe. I thank God he's never made me a materialistic person. I want them ones you can give me a car. It can have the front grill missing. It can be loud. And if it drives me from point A to B, you ask my sister, I'm going to drive it. She had a car. She was embarrassed to drive. I said, get that car to me. And I drove that car. Because I don't care. Because it got me from point A to point B. But God said, you think you're all these things. In a bag of chips, he said, but you're nothing. Because see, without Christ, we are absolutely nothing. Nothing. I don't care what we gain in this world. You remember I told you last week, Solomon, who was the wisest king to ever have lived. The Bible says, there will come not, not come another as wise as him. Said, when I got to the end of my life, and I looked things over. And I started doing some research and I realized that there's nothing that meant nothing that was apart from God. Nothing. So we could gain these riches. We could get in these churches and take our fancy places. You, you know, we come in here and we got on our suits and shoes and big old hats. And you better not dare sit in my seat. That's my seat. You, you, you know, we, we, we ambassadors of Christ. You know, we we supposed to have the mind of Christ and the love of Christ. But unless you sit in that seat, you, it looks at you like you're crippling. You better get up out of my seat. Don't you know who I, I'm thinking that such and so and so. That's, that's, that's my seat. But God said, when you begin to act like that, you are poor. You're blind. You're naked. You're wretched, he said. Ratchet. What what that word of the young kids you say you ratchet? What ratchet mean? <laughs> it just reminds me of God saying you're ratchet. I, I have no use for you when you become like that. When you think it's all about you, when you think it's it's, it's your doing, when you think you're so self sufficient that God ain't got a hand in it. God said you're wretched, and when you become like that, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Can you just imagine? Being vomited out of God's mouth. Because you couldn't pick a side, Elizabeth. 
You you want it. You you wanted the things that y'all y'all know the Christians. Y'all know they 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 wore it down. They 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 want to say Jesus is their savior, but yet they want to hold on to the ways of the world. They they can't pick a side. They can't make up their mind where they want to go. I'm 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 gonna put my hand down on that one. God said you gotta pick a side. It's so important for your life to line up with the will and the word of God. Yes. There are so many people looking. I, I just heard Brother Mike testify. The pastor went in the grocery store. Mm. And the presence of God was on the pastor so strong that the lady began to weep behind him. And, and when I tell you all that people are connected to you and connected and they're watching you, I'm just not something I'm just coming up with in my mind. He just gave a perfect example. That lady didn't know the pastor from a can of paint. But she felt something. You, you know, like the woman with the issue of blood. You know, when you, back in that day when, when, you, when a woman was on her time, she wasn't even allowed to go around people. But this woman had this issue for 12 years, the Bible said. She went to all kinds of doctors. She spent every dime she had. Nobody could do it. But she knew that there was something. She had heard something about Jesus, Miss Andresa. And she knew there was something about Jesus. That if I just get in this presence, and I'm, she said, I don't even have to touch him. But if I just get in this presence and I just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. Do you know what it took for her to push past that crowd, Erica? You, you, she, was, she was bleeding. She had to have a stench to her because she was bleeding for 12 years. But she said, I don't care. I need my healing. I need my Savior. I need the Lord. And I don't care who I got to push out the way. Sometimes y'all going to have to push people out the way because they wasn't designed to be in your life anyway. Come on, Pastor. He said, God going to do something new. He going to start switching things around. That means that includes the people that are in your life. Not everybody is designed to go where God is taking you. Not everybody is equipped to go where God is taking you. You got to have a made up mind. You cannot be like the children of Laodicea. One minute I want to be in the world, the next minute I want to be serving God. One minute I want to be in the world, the next minute I want to be serving God. God said pick a side. Choose. Either be cold. I can handle you when you're cold. I can handle you. You don't want no part of me. You want me in the world. You don't decide. You want to go there. I can handle that. You want to be hot. You all for me. You want to praise me. Love on me. I can handle that too. But when you become wishy-washy. And you start teetering and tottering on the fence. God said. I will spit you out of my mouth. Because you know what? You're so confused. You don't even know what side you want to be on. And so he told the Laodiceans, you need to pick a side. You need to choose whether you're going to be hot or cold. Because if you're lukewarm, he said, I will vomit you out of my mouth. He said, but you need to desire my riches and desire my clothes. The Bible says that we will have robes of white. We will have new garments. I look forward to my new garment, I look forward to my new name. A name that nobody knows. Because I desire to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. I desire to have those things that he has designed just for me, Sister Erica. Just like he's designed things just for you. I desire those things. He said, desire, I desire for his blood to keep me. I desire for his blood to cover me. I desire for his blood to lead me. I desire for his blood to just watch over me. I desire that, that new robe, that, that white robe. I desire that crown that he said. When I come back, I come back with my rewards in my hand. I look forward to those things. God wants you to look forward to those things. It's hard to go through this life. It's not easy. I heard a songwriter say, while well, I'm on this tedious journey. And it is a tedious journey. Because if you flesh like me, you know you face some temptations that are hard to overcome. 
You know you go through things and you just don't know how you're going to get through it. You know you got some nasty habits that you don't know how to put down. Now, I ain't accusing y'all nothing. I'm just saying, if you if you anything like me, flesh, you got to have some experiences like me. But God said, desire. Desire my gold. Desire my clothing. Desire that you, you may, you, you desire so you may be dressed and not ashamed of your nakedness. You see, because what, what we want, the Bible says everything is naked and exposed in the eyesight of God. We run around here doing things. You know how folk worry about what the pastor see. Well, you know, let me do this at this hour. I know pastor won't sleep. I know pastor work. I know she ain't going to see. You know how folk do that. Yeah. And it ain't a big one worry about what God see. And God said, I'm omnipresent. I'm everywhere all at the same time. Don't nothing get past God. But yet we think we hide it from the pastor. But he said, desire my, 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 my robe so you come up your nakedness. You know, when, when, when you desire God's will, when you desire to put on his, his full armor, you desire to wear his garment, you ain't out there trying to shuck and jive, peep and hide, over there in that person's bed knowing that's somebody else's husband, over there in that person's bed knowing that's somebody else's wife, out there in the casino game, we're spending all your money, no, no your more is new tomorrow. But God said, all those habits that you find hard to break, you know, you, when you put on my clothes, I will cover up all that stuff. He says, desire ointment that you may see. Ointment for your eyes. God, give me spiritual eyes. I want to be able to discern. I want to be able to know. I, I, I want to I wanna be able to discern what God has for me so much so that when I walk in the room, I need to know if that spirit is kindled to mine or not. I need to know if that person is for me or against me. I want to be so in tune with God. I want to be so in tune with God that when you're going through something, Sister Dawn, I, I don't even have to ask you if something's wrong. I can just come to you and say, Sis, let's pray. Because I want to have spiritual eyes. I want to be able to see things. Yes. That the average person can't see. Because yes. they ain't paying God no mind. They don't care nothing about God. They going on about this life. That life this life is going to last forever. So it's all about me. Me, myself, and I. What have you done for me lately? It's, well, how, how this going to benefit me? Yes. Is what they ask him. But only what you do for Christ hey. is going to last. Yes. Everything else is going to. If you die right now. And you got $10 million in the bank. Dollars in the bank. And you got five houses in five different states. Four cars. Guess what? None of it going with you. You can have the baddest wife on this side of glory. But the Bible says there will be no marrying in heaven. Only what you do. But Jesus Christ is going to last. Amen. He says, I want you to desire my gold. I want you to, to desire my robe. That we, it will cover up your nakedness. See, the thing about, about God is he's so good in Jesus. He died on the cross. And the Bible says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So even when we mess up, but, but because we have that robe, that, 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 that his robe on us, it protects us and it covers us. Even when we need protection from ourselves, you, you ever get your own way? I'm going to raise my hand because I know I have. I, I, I got to got my way. I probably will get my way again before I leave this, this side of glory. But God said you take on my road. And when you when you seek after my gold, you, you know that, that blood. That, that, I, I, I'm like brother Mike. I spent the whole day talking about the blood of Jesus. That's how effective it is. Not it was. It is. But he said when you take on these things. And when you desire these things. As many as I love. He says. I rebuke and I discipline. It's a good thing. When the God. Of heaven and earth. 
the creator of this world. I heard Brother Mike say the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. It's a good thing when he says, I've come to rebuke you, which simply means I've come to correct you. The same way he sent Nathan to David is when he stops speaking. And when you continue in your nasty, selfish ways, because the flesh wants what it wants when it wants. The flesh is only desirous to the flesh. The flesh is not even subject to the things of God. That's why the flesh goes back into the ground and never inherits heaven. Somebody ought to hear me. Desire the things of God. Even if you fall seven times, get back up. God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. God said, I won't even give up on you until the day that Jesus Christ comes back. But he said, I will send a word to correct you. And when I send that word to correct you, don't get in your feelings. I ain't going back to that church. She was talking to me. Do y'all know the word minister to me too? Uh -huh. Just because I'm the carrier doesn't mean that I don't have to obey the word. Uh -huh. God corrects me when I'm wrong. And I welcome it. Because you know why? Yeah. I've fallen in love with him. I'm no longer teetering and tottering and lukewarm. I picked a side. So Jesus, when I mess up, let me know I messed up. Help me get back up. Help me get on my feet. Help me continue this journey. One thing I love about Paul, see, he was once Saul, and he used to hold the, the coats of those who killed Christians. He didn't even go out looking to recruit Christians to be killed. But when Paul became Paul and God sent him on his mission, Paul understood. He, 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 he was so wise and intelligent and very versed in different languages and, and just Paul was just he was an a, a, a awesome man of God and he understood a lot and he understood the most important thing was it has nothing to do with me but everything to do with God Amen. so he said don't think because you see me put these writings in the New Testament that I've gotten it all together I haven't obtained it yet I still run the race right alongside you. He said, but you know what? I ain't looking at my past. And that mic don't came loose. He said, I ain't looking at my past. He said, he said I, I'm not looking at my past. He said, I'm not looking at those things I used to do, those things that person I used to be. I'm not going to let that stop me. He said, I'm going to keep my eyes. I see Jesus at the end of this race. I see where I want to be. I want to be seated in heavenly places with him. I want to be in heaven praising and worshiping him. And I'm going to keep my eyes focused right there. Yes. And that's what God desires us to do. When you fall, get up. When he comes to correct you, listen. Don't get in your feelings. This has nothing to do with feelings. If it had to do with feelings, Jesus Christ would have never died on the cross. He never let his deity get in the way of what he had to do for each and every one of us. Although he could have called down thousands and thousands and thousands upon angels, he never once let his deity get in the way. He was fully God and fully man. And what he did for us, he did as a man. Flesh. Pinch your flesh. Pinch yourself. Now think about nails being driven in your hand and in your feet. A crown of thorns in your head. He did that as a man. While he was still fully God. Don't let your feelings get in the way. He did this. Knowing. He never sinned. He never did any of, th any of the things they accused him of. He never did nothing wrong. Nothing. Thank God. He didn't get in his feelings. And said wait a minute. I do do this. I ain't do nothing wrong. I'm not taking your place. Because that's something we would do. You, you know, like, truth be told, you, you, you know, Erica, we, we we going down the street and some man come running and he he said, wait a minute. I dropped my $100 and I saw you pick it up. And you said, ah, oh, that wasn't me. He said, well, one of y'all going to die today. Who, 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 which one picked it up? I bet you the first thing you want to say is she did it. <laughs> she did it. It wasn't me. And I'm 
they say she did. <laughs> but thank God he's not like us. Yeah. Thank God he doesn't think like Thank God he's never in his feelings. And he has feelings. Y'all remember when Lazarus passed away and, he, and Jesus took his time on purpose to go back. He knew there was a heavenly purpose for what he was doing. But it grieved his heart when he knew that the people didn't believe in what he was saying. Because he said, you're going to miss out on the glory of God. Because you don't believe. And he wept. So he got feelings. He got emotions. But he didn't let that stop him from doing what he needed to do for each and every one of us. But God says, as many as I love, I rebuke, I correct. As many as I love. Y'all ever get around those folks and, and, you know, you talk about the word of God and they always got a but to it. I, I, I know, I know the Lord said this, but I know God said this, but. That, that's the lukewarm people that God is talking about. You, you want to hold on. You, you want to say God is my Savior, but yet you want to hold on to the world. You can't do both. Because he says in this passage of scripture, I, I see it right in front of my eyes. When you can't make up your mind, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. I will spit you out. I can't say I'm Jesus is ambassador, but yet I'm following the ways of the world. That's double-minded. Y'all know what the scriptures say about a double-minded man. Somebody tell me what the scriptures say about a double-minded man. He's unstable. No? Unstable in all his ways. Y'all remember the weevil wobble commercials? <laughs> you weevil, you wobble, but you don't fall down. But the thing about an un double minded man, eventually he gonna fall. Right. He ain't gonna get back up. He says, so be zealous and repent. See, the thing, of, uh, the, the thing what I love when he went to the church and lay out, see, that wasn't, the, that wasn't just the end when he said, you're neither hot nor cold. He, he still gave them another chance. And so God is coming to this house today to give us another chance. He's saying, pick a side. He, he, he's coming soon. I, I believe I heard Brother Mike say, God is moving in the earth. Yes. He's, well, he's doing something new. Yes. You look at the signs of the times. You go in your Bible, you read the signs of the times. We are in those times. He's coming soon. But he said, I'm coming to give you another chance. You got to pick a side. You know, God is so gracious, merciful, and loving. He says, I wish for no man to perish, but that every man would come to repentance. He don't want nobody to die and go to hell. And we think of perish as just dying. No, perish is being eternally separated from God. He said, I don't want that to happen to not one soul on this earth. That's how much he loves us. He said, but if you hear my voice, if you hear what I'm saying to you in this house today, don't close the door. Open it so I can come in. Because when you open it, I don't care what you've done up until this point, Brother Michael. All right. Up until this very, the very moment before you walk through the door. God said, if you open the door for me to come in, I'm going to come in and dine with you. I'm going to eat with you. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to cover you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to watch over you. I'm going to give you my garment. I'm going to give you my gold. I'm going to give you new eyesight. Because I desire for you to come and spend an eternity with me. I'm appealing to your heart. If I knock on your door, because he's knocking right now. He's knocking. He's knocking. You have to decide whether you want to open it and let him in. He said, when you open the door, I will come in and eat with him. And you'll eat with Jesus. And he said to the one who conquers, I will get the right to sit with me on my throne. So instead of letting those worldly temptations take over you, you got to learn how to stand. On God's word. I don't care how much it hurts. I've been through some hurt in my life. I've been through some shame. Some shame I put myself through. But I've learned to lean and depend on Jesus. I've learned to stand on his word. I've had people smile on my face sticking a knife in my back. And God is so good. He won't have you be ignorant of the device of Satan. 
I had fair weather friends. Anybody got a fair weather friend? You, you, you know, the, 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 those, those fake friends, the real enemies. Be in my face all the time. Talk about me like a dog on the street. When it came back to me, and I knew, because I knew that I only told that person something. Nobody else knew, but yet it got out there and it came back to me. And guess what? To this day, they don't even know it, because I love them anyway. I kept on loving them. I kept on loving them. And I kept on loving them. Because why? We have to learn how to conquer. To be able to put those attitudes up under our feet. Put those feelings up under our feet. Put those emotions up under our feet. And live for God. Pick a side. You want to be hot. You want to be cold. But choose a side. Don't let God choose for you because he already told you what his ultimate decision will be. I will spit you right out of my mouth. This particular version says, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Yeah, I have a vomit. Oh, that's such a horrible feeling. Can you imagine? You, you, you know, like, like that, that whale that spit Jonah up that time when Jonah was being disobedient. But God says, to the one who conquers, I, I will I will get the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. You see, because Jesus, even though they did all these things to him, they mocked him, they spit on him, they, they beat him, they lied. They defamed his name. Or so they thought. But he didn't let his emotions and his feelings get in the way. He didn't let that stop him from what he was here to do. And that's the same mindset we have to have. When God gives us a task, we ought to complete it. I heard Harvey Watkins say in one of my favorite songs, you know, the Can't Spirits one of my favorite group. When God gives you a mission, you're not supposed to stop. It don't matter who don't like you. It don't matter who don't believe you. It don't matter who is for you, who's against you. I heard Brother Mike say earlier, if the Trinity is on the inside of you, and if God be for you, he's a whole lot more than the world against you. So it don't matter. Stay focused on the task just like Jesus did. He said, just the, the same way I also conquered and sat down with my father in his house. Let anyone who has ears. Now you can choose to close your ears to this word. And you could choose not to pay God any mind. And you could choose to go on living any old hellish way that you desire to live. But God said, if you are having ear, listen to what I'm saying right now. Because there's going to come a time when you're going to have to give an account. There's going to come a time when you have to stand before me. Everybody has to meet that judgment day. Not one soul will escape that judgment day. So God say, on the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Anyone who has ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Are you living for yourself or are you living for God? Choose ye this day whom you will serve. For wide and broad is the gate to destruction. But narrow is the way to salvation. And there will be few that find it. Many shall come to me and say, Lord, Lord. And he's going to say to them, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. Christian folk, because they say, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? And he says, I don't know you. Living for God or living for self. God, we thank you for this word that is going forth today in this house. God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, as we go through this journey called life, God, and as you have us planted in the earth, God, God, we ask that you would help us, oh God, every time we get it wrong, oh God, every time we think a stinking thought, God, every time we say the wrong word, every time we purposely hurt and offend somebody, God. Help us. Show us the way, God. Lead us. Order our steps because we desire to have the mind of Christ. Help us to shine our light in dark places, God. Help us to show that it's all about you and it's not about us. 
Help us to make up in our minds that I'd much rather have somebody see you on the inside of me than to see me get revenge with them. Help us to realize God is nothing that we can attain in our own strength. God, it wasn't our blood that was shed. And it's definitely not our blood that can redeem us. Help us to see these things. Help us to want to do better, God. Give us a do right mind. Create us a clean heart and renew that right spirit in us, God. God, we desire to be in your will. We desire to hear your voice. We desire to spend time in the presence of you, God. So I just say thank you in the name of Jesus. Touch each and every one of us right now up under the sound of your voice, God. Strengthen us for this journey, God. Have your will and your way in each and every one of our lives, God. Harder not our hearts, God. But God, you said you can turn the heart of a king whichever way you will. Turn our hearts toward you, God. For we, ever, we, we forever want to reign with you. God, if there's somebody who's listening online right now, God, who does not know you in the free parting of their sin, God, I pray that they will simply repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you Lord and Master. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you went down into the pits of hell and got the keys of life. And I believe now that you are seated on the right hand of the Father. And I shall see you one day. If you simply pray that prayer, you have gained salvation. Find yourself a good Bible-based church because the Lord does tell us to assemble ourselves together. Let's not be a bedside Baptist, as they call it. But find yourself a good Bible-based church and begin to reach out. God loves each and every one of us. God wants to restore each and every one of us. He desires to save each and every one of us. And so we thank him. So God, I thank you for doing it now. I praise and I magnify your holy name because you alone are worthy. We thank you, we praise you, we love you now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Am